anything that lies in this canyon, the Grand Canyon, is all sacred. Even the water. Water is life, and so water made that life to make that canyon. The natural beauty of it right now is still alive. It's still there, and that's where our prayers are going. The Grand Canyon is among the Earth's premier natural wonders and home to one of America's most beloved national parks. The canyon cuts a broad track across northern Arizona. A mile deep, over 18 miles wide, and 277 miles long, it has fascinated every human to lay eyes on it for thousands of years. The national park now serves over six million visitors annually. But each year, only 20,000 will see it from the bottom up. A rafting expedition through the Grand Canyon is, for many, a life-changing experience. It's a journey into vast wilderness, a descent into deep geologic time. Exposed rocks formed hundreds of millions of years ago pass by as you slip further into the wild. A river trip through Grand Canyon is one of the only places where you can go and be away from the hubbub of computers and cell phones. I think spending time uh, rafting on the Colorado River is a great way to connect with water in a very special and unique way. Without a motor, a river trip through the Grand Canyon can take as long as three weeks. Each day of the trip, the Colorado River throws a variety of monstrous rapids at you. Upon his visit to the Grand Canyon in 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt said, leave it as it is. You cannot improve on it. The ages have been at work on it, and man can only mar it. We have marred the Grand Canyon over the last 100 years, we have not left it as it is. We made the Grand Canyon a national park in order to protect it. But now a radical new idea for development threatens the very heart of the canyon. Developers based in Scottsdale, Arizona, want to construct a major new tourist attraction on the eastern rim of the canyon down into an area known simply as the Confluence. The Confluence is the area in the Grand Canyon where the Little Colorado River meets the Greater Colorado River in the canyon. In this space where the rivers meet, our stories say, this is where life began. This is the emergence place. Sometimes I'll be really feeling bad and I'll go out there sit on the hill and pray. The confluence is where people meet to pray, to come together and pray as a family. I oppose the Escalate Bill because 
We hold that place as a sacred place. We do our offering there for the sacred sites. The development, known as the Escalade Proposal, outlines a resort complex centered around a gondola system that would take crowds of visitors all the way from the rim to the river. Grand Canyon Escalade would include five-star motels, a raised river walk, an amphitheater uh, restaurant, and a tram, a gondola system going all the way down into the Grand Canyon at our most sacred area. Although 20,000 rafters visit the Grand Canyon each year, very few will actually set foot at the confluence. The developers of the Escalade proposal plan to bring 10,000 people a day to this secluded area. The land on the rim of the canyon, above the confluence, isn't part of the national park. It's the western edge of the Navajo Reservation. The developers went to the Navajo Nation Council to get the project started. But the Navajo are not the only indigenous people with ties to the confluence. The Hopi and Zuni tribes also find the confluence culturally significant. When somebody passes on, their soul will return back to the, um, where the um, confluence is at. Um, in Hopi, they call it Sipapu. Um, that's where they say their, your soul will go back to go back into Mother Earth. If you've never seen a sacred site or a prayer site, you will walk right by it or you might even step on it or walk over on top of it. We don't want those things destroyed. We don't want them disturbed. My first thought was that it was a joke, a laugh. And then the second thought is, is this a joke? Angry. And then, this has to be a joke. Sadness, just great sadness. And I said, this is a joke, I'm gonna fight it. In response to the Escalade proposal, some of the Navajo families formed a grassroots organization called Save the Confluence. Save the Confluence has gathered thousands of signatures on a petition against the Escalade proposal. Other communities have rallied behind Save the Confluence to protect the Grand Canyon, including the Hopi, Zuni, and Havasupai tribal councils. They are supported by more allies, like Grand Canyon National Park, the Sierra Club, American Rivers, Grand Canyon Trust, and the Grand Canyon River Guides Association, who are also working to protect and preserve the canyon. I think that the Escalade project would very much alter the place in ways that it has already been altered through um, Glen Canyon Dam. And so we really want to continue to find ways to partner with the Native American tribes that call Grand Canyon sacred. Keeping the river and that experience wilderness is really important for future people getting to have that opportunity to really experience the canyon as it is. chances that the Grand Canyon Escalade project will be placed on the side of the Grand Canyon. Very real, it's not gone away. Really? Yeah. It's still, it's still well, a I, I mean, the, the current Navajo Nation position and the president is great. It's uh, a temporary relief. But as we speak, the developers are forming their partnership. They're out searching for the next venue. They're at every Navajo Nation council meeting, lobbying all of the leadership. 
Everybody has to stay vigilant on this topic. We are working directly with the tribe for cultural and economic development that's sensitive, long-term, sustainable, and that we can help with that Grand Canyon being the neighbor to the Navajo Nation. The Escalade proposal was introduced right as the Bennett Freeze was lifted. The Bennett Freeze was a development ban imposed by the United States federal government on 1.6 million acres of land in the western region of the Navajo Reservation. It lasted over 40 years and contributed to extreme poverty in the area. I've been away from my homeland almost 26 years. Coming home, things hasn't really changed yet, meaning that opportunity for jobs there's areas here on Navajo unemployment as, as high as 60%. Where I live, down in Nahatetzi, I call it 80% joblessness. Our people need money. They need, they, they need jobs. It's not that I'm supporting it. What I support is economic development on Navajo. The revenue that they're willing to give to the Navajo Nation would be at 8% of gross revenue. That's for the entire Navajo Nation. 110 chapters, over 350,000 members of the Navajo Nation. 8%, that's like asking your whole household to share eight pennies. How do you feel about us coming in with a project? How is it gonna affect you? Nobody came to me. Is it okay with you? Nobody came to me. They just went right over the permanent holder, land user. On October 31st, 2017, the Navajo Nation Council held a special session to determine the fate of the Grand Canyon Escalade proposal. I am here today to express my concerns and uh, why we are trying to uh, destroy the sacred uh, Mother Earth and the sacred Grand Canyon that was put here by Mother Nature millions of years ago. Why are we doing that? People that are trying to develop this area is not good. They should listen more to the traditional people. I'd like to uh, say to the council here that this proceedings here is illegal because you have not consulted with the water people. You have not consulted with the wind people. You have not consulted with the rock people. Right. And all of these natural ways of life have never been consulted. So this is an illegal meeting that's gonna take place. Thank you, oh. Mr. Speaker. You know, what, what is the future of our generation here? You know, our future generation will have nothing and uh, they will just only have scars to look at. A vote of two favor, 16 votes, no fails. Navajo Nation Council said no escalate. Saving the I was happy with it. And that was a good feeling to come back home and tell my people what happened. I just want that natural beauty to stay there for our future generation to say, okay, my grandparents had fought for this place. We just need to keep it the way it is. That's all I want is people to leave it alone and respect that place. The Grand Canyon still faces many threats. A 20-year ban on uranium mining is now under review and might be lifted. Proposed residential development in the Tusian region near the South Rim threatens groundwater supplies. The seeps and springs, they'll all be impacted along this rim by development and taking any water, groundwater out of the uh, aquifers below here. This is an unnecessary development that's really promoted by a few wealthy developers who want to have Grand Canyon in their portfolio. And they want to be the ones that say, yeah, we own part of the Grand Canyon. And I think it's our place.
The fight against the Escalade proposal isn't over. Developers could resurrect parts of the plan and negotiate a new deal for development in the Grand Canyon. We need to keep working. There's still people, there's still developers wanting to come in to take advantage of that area. It's become more than just a family. It's become everybody on the Navajo Nation, the other grassroots groups that revere the water, that want to stop fracking, that want to stop uranium mining, uranium transportation. It's, that's our whole family now. The petition signers all over the world. I just want to express our humble um, thank you. Yeah. Stick with us. We still need all the support in order to protect and preserve it for everyone.